Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the ninth part in my series where I go through the process of building my garden office. In this part I'll be installing the electrics and networking and finishing off the insulation. I know it's been a while since my last video so thanks for bearing with me. As you may have seen in a previous video, my son was born part way through the build and this slowed progress both during the construction phase and more so when producing these videos. Rest assured I will be releasing all the parts and will do so as quickly as I'm able. As always, I hope you enjoy the video. Right, so the electrician's just arrived and I'm going to go quickly clear up all of this. You can see I've started insulating the front of my building there, but he's going to come along and um, install the consumer unit uh, for the building in this corner and then various cables for plug sockets and light switches and, and so on. So um, I'm going to clean up and then leave them to it. Um, you can see here as well through the window that our neighbour just had their um, lawn re-turfed and they very kindly had some left over and, and uh, gave us the off cut so I can use it for um, this kind of rather ugly looking section here um, from when they laid the they, the, uh, the conduit that the armoured cable will go in. So uh, yeah, that was nice. Hooray! We have a network. of the inside of the office after the electrician had been. Um, you can see where I've been um, insulating over here. Looking over here, actually I'll start from the, the consumer unit side. So um, the armor cable comes in here and there also is a, um, there's a there has to be a ground spike outside now. Um, new regs apparently for like this year. Um, so that's what the yellow green um, earthing cable is. Uh, that runs up here to the small consumer unit and yeah you can see I think it, this is a four-way one I'm not entirely sure but um, yeah anyway so you can see there's a couple of rings here as well there's a ring for two external sockets so if something was to happen out there it doesn't trip the electrics that are inside um, you can see coming along here this is the loop for this will be a plug socket uh, this will be another plug socket. There's a uh, another uh, bit here for um, a, a fuse spur for the external socket, which goes out here. Um, you can see uh, another loop which will go up here to another plug socket, which will be behind the TV. Um, then you've got another plug socket as well as a light fitting, which will go up here. Uh, going along again, we've got another plug socket over here with a light fitting. 
And then going along here, we've got another plug socket and then another plug socket as well, which is the end of the, the ring there. So, um, and, and nothing up here. I've got to put all the network uh, cabling in, um, but we have run network cable uh, to the building. Oh, uh, this is for a light switch. This will control an, an outside light, which you can see uh, there. It's just kind of, it's pushed outside and kind of looped back through. Um, and it will control the lights on the wall behind me here. Um, and then I think you can, yeah, you can just about see the external socket cabling there, which again is pushed through and kind of looped back through um, as well. So yes, yeah, so that's the heads and tails of, of what, what he's done. Um, I can now go ahead and insulate all of this and kind of wire up everything. I've got uh, all of my electrical stuff waiting to be used right there. The electrician's done something a little bit daft um, in that he drilled this hole before he put the trunking on and now that he's put the trunking on it means that the hole the, the, where the cables would normally come through in the middle of this um, uh, kind of wall plate uh, it, it won't it, they won't come out in the middle so I've got to drill a big hole kind of here to make it work um, it doesn't matter but um, yeah it's more just like a minor frustration Again, 
things here. Okay. I see it's covered in this sort of gunky stuff, but I guess that's good when it's outside. Right, I've just separated out all of these and I've, crib I've cut off the other uh, sort of surround sleeve of the cable, so I'm just gonna actually connect all these up now. Um, I had to check, my understanding of network sockets has changed a bit or it's moved on and I've my information in my head is out of date but I do actually know how to do this I used to do this a lot but now it appears you get A and B standards for wiring and everyone follows B and there are handy little colour codes inside my thing here with A and B labelled if I got the right way up yeah uh, and I'm going to be following the ones on the outside, which is the B wiring. And uh, I was trying to make sure that it was, you know, the right, the right colours. Um, but to be honest with you, even if you didn't have them the right way around, as long as you have them consistently the right way around, they will transmit. It's just they're colour coded to help, you know, work out what's what on either end. But obviously, with doing it on the B standard. Uh, or way of doing it, then obviously I will make sure that it is up to um, standard, I think. <laughs> God, this stuff is so horrible and sticky. So I've obviously just finished out the front, but um, this bit of conduit on this end was sort of sticking up like this. So I didn't want to cut it off because I'm not quite sure what's happening with my um, cladding that will go on the outside. So what I've done for now is just stuck in two screws just to hold it down so that it's kind of nice and flush while I kind of pull everything through. And then once I put the cladding on, I'll work out when I do it. But I have to remember as well, this is going to be hidden below a bit of decking anyway. So, um, which is why it's uh, tacked on the front and not kind of under the building or something. So, um, yeah, I think for now that will probably do. <coughs> Kick me tortoise over if you decided to pay me a visit. Well, I can't help it. Occasionally I do a mistaken in for an old pie. Okay, so I th I haven't actually planned this part out yet, but I need to put in my Ethernet network cable now. And I've been trying to work out how to do it. Uh, from my research, everywhere sort of says 16 inches of separation. Um, and if we take a tape measure, from our from electrical cables to network cables, 16 inches is about that. So, or you know, if you go from the middle, about about there, and that runs just underneath my lower noggins. So, I think what I'm going to do is, I was going to have my network cable uh, come into two four uh, bay kind of patch panels here. Um, but I think it's too close to all the electrical wiring. The, the main wire all the way to the fuse box up here is, is shielded, but it also has all the other cables going down for the, uh, the, the lighting sockets there and, and, and all the um, 
power sockets as well, uh, which you can see this that one will go there and so on. So I think what I'm going to do is you can see my uh, network cable is all kind of comes in here. I think I'm going to put this up here as far away from this as possible. I'll try and attach all my net, all my electrical equipment to the other side, kind of closest to the door. Have all my network uh, so, uh, cables run up here, and then come through this corner and then run along the top of all of these. And then when I need to put in a socket, I will just kind of run a cable off down uh, instead, um, rather than, yeah, have them all kind of running together, which I know isn't good. Even if you've got shielded cable, I think it's shielded from interference uh, from other cables, but not from electrical cable, so, so I kind of understand it. So I think I'll do that and that will run all the way um, across here and then around the room and, and so on. And then I need one for the TV, so at one point I'll just run one uh, up here. I could even come off this side and go up and then kind of poke out through here if I want it on this side, or I might keep my um, plug socket on this side and my network socket on this side up here. I'm not, I'm undecided yet, but um, yeah, hopefully whenever I need to make a, put in a network socket, I can just run a cable down next to my electrical socket and the interference should be minimal. Um, because there won't be interference on the cables as well. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do for the moment and uh, yeah, see how that goes. like uh, that comes in from the camera on the outside so you can see it uh, up there and then that goes through and then down through the essentially the top of the wall and then comes down here and what I'm going to do is because I didn't have enough cable is that I'm just going to terminate it in a, um, a network socket here and then do a patch panel between this one and um, one of the, the double ones here so I'll have a single patch panel here a double patch panel there, one will go to my computer which will be over here and then the other one will just have a little patch lead uh, bridging the two. There's kind of more points where it could, there could be an issue I guess because there's more kind of sections of cable and connections and things but I think it's actually, it's probably going to, going to be slightly neater than routing a cable all the way around the room to um, the panel that will be on the opposite side of me so that's kind of what I've done and also because um, I'm going to I sort of decided I was going to put a camera on the inside as well, just for like security, and it'd be mounted on the ceiling somewhere up here. I figured the same sort of thing. I'll have a little patch panel up here, and it will plug straight into there. And then in the wall, you can actually see it here. This will be up here, mounted at the back of the patch panel, and then it comes through the wall, and then down, and it'll probably terminate somewhere around here or um, or, or this side. Or well, I'll probably pull these through actually and have my panel sort of right in the corner on the, uh, this section of the wall. Um, and that way, yeah, this will terminate into a single patch panel, pa um, single ethernet panel, 
and then I have a little patch lead that runs between the two and that will carry it through to where they all kind of meet up over here with the, I've got two four-way patch panels and they'll be all connected into a switch and then they all run off to you know, various, the places around the room and the two cables that run all the way from here through to the to the house. So um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing, that's what I've done. I'm just gonna neaten up some of these so like I can tack this uh, sort of the top and the bottom uh, with some um, little, I'll just get one here, these little um, cable kind of clips not sure the exact name for them, but I'm just gonna use these just to tidy up around here um, and all the other sections, and then, um, yeah, can start putting in insulation in all of these, which is gonna take a while, but um, I, I think I'll just start this way and work my way around. Okay, I'll be the first to say it's not pretty and it seems to be cutting this to the exact size is really hard. It's probably that, you know, all of all of these timbers aren't straight and, you know, all the noggins certainly were kind of put in, uh, you know, roughly. A, I measured them up, but they're not. They're, the one side, this side will be lower down than, say, this side. So you get this funny kind of... Um, you know, shape, it's not quite a rectangle. So it's not, I think I, I spent a lot of time doing my floor and I think my walls probably, you know, I didn't do them as quite as carefully, but they're still, you know, they're not bad. They're nice. Anyway, where I've made mistakes, like here, I've got gaps and stuff. I'm basically using any off cuts from the floor here. And I'm just taking any of these and just kind of shoving them in the gaps and then using um, expanding foam to kind of hold them in place and kind of glue, glue them in place. Um, just to kind of use them up really and fill any tiny little gaps um, and any gaps where I've actually done like to say this one was quite good um, there was only a little bit uh, that was needed say right at the top up here so I found a little slither and kind of stuffed it in and then did expanding foam in there so you know some of it's not too bad this side's terrible this one's not too bad uh, these were okay these were made up out of pieces um, as well. Um, my thinking is basically these are the thicker boards, the rest of the building will be 50 mil and these are 100 mil. So like what I've done at the front of the building here, I've actually got to kind of shave off the front of them because they're currently proud of uh, all of my um, wall timbers. So um, my thinking is because the sun um, comes around from this side and kind of goes around here and sets over the back of the house, I think the, the side where the sun is gonna be needs the most amount of insulation because I don't want it to get too hot or too cold. So um, I was kind of thinking, and I'm worried about this room being warmer in the summer than I am colder in the winter, if you see what I mean. Um, so I think I'm doing the right kind of thing here and I've got a few more pieces to use down here, but ultimately that's all my really, really thick stuff now. And then I'm gonna move on to the, the thinner 50 mil for the, for the rest of the walls.
it's hot. That's the GoPro I was filming with. So that is all the insulation completed. I've uh, done the front and I've had to shave off the front because the insulation was bigger than the uh, than the wall timbers. Um, and you can see that some of it's a bit of a mess, but it doesn't matter. I don't need a continuous um, kind of thing that can be taped up because I've got this polythene stuff to go around. I will try and tape up a bit of it. Um, but yeah, it's all like all the little gaps filled in. You can see where I've made kind of used up pieces of of insulation at various kind of um, shapes and sizes to try and use it all up and I think that's okay. They're all quite a tight fit and they've got expanding foam and everything. So this wall is all super thick stuff. So it's like either 90 or 100 um, mil now gone, you know, it's obviously it's all 90 uh, or 95 mil now uh, because if you know, cut the front off and made it fit. Um, and then going around here, what I've done is, these are easy, these are all 50 mil panels. Um, Using the calculators online, this says what I this it says this is what I need. I think I probably could have done with you know the thicker stuff, but ultimately this was a bit cheaper. Um, I will find out whether this is any good or not um, when I'm using it all. But what I was able to do is anywhere there was a uh, cables, I was able to cut the board to the side and then cut it in half and slide one half up underneath my network cables and slide the other half down underneath or up underneath the uh, the electrical cables. So it actually worked quite well. So you can see that and I've just got to fill in all the little gaps and stuff. Um, and there's some bits here that get really messy, but yeah, you can see it's all kind of insulated and you can see here where I've been using up all the leftovers from the 50 mil boards um, and, in, and in this corner as well, actually, these two bits, because they're sort of narrower. And annoyingly, there's one board outside and I only had to cut one piece off of it, which was this one. I'll just cut it in half. Um, so that's sort of like my flaw in that I had to cut one board to fit, but that's okay, because I used the rest of the boards obviously in, uh, in on, on this wall over here. Um, and then over here, I've had to make very custom jobs. This is a thick piece of insulation. I've just cut kind of a channel out of it um, for all my electrics, and then that goes through to my um, uh, my outside light or will do and then this is all kind of a bit of a jigsaw again and then you go down here and obviously um, you got the cables coming in so I've kind of made like a little box um, where under here there's a there's a gap so there's kind of like two pieces at the back and then this piece is put over the front of it and then this piece is a bit turned on its sort of side with a channel cut out of it for here and that makes it the kind of the smallest possible area for kind of the weather to get in or cold to get in and then I've got a hole there which goes through to uh, an outside plug socket so um so yeah I'm quite I'm quite pleased with everything I hope it's all all right um and I was able to do this wall and this wall just today um in about sort of four or five hours um this wall took a couple of days that wall took about a day um because they're more fiddly and you know the bigger pieces require trimming down and everything but um, yeah, I'm really pleased with everything now. So now I've just got to tidy it all up, fill in all the gaps. I am going to tape up this wall um, with aluminium tape uh, just to make it a bit neater and, and this wall as well. Uh, and then I'm going to put my polythene wrap all the way around. Cool. difficult to sort of film anything even with my sort of um, little portable sight light um, that, I'm, uh, that I've got for all of this um, but basically I taped up it, all of this wall um, I taped up all the areas that were exposed foam except for these two little bits which I'll make good once I've kind of pulled the sockets through to the right place I think the sockets will probably go kind of in the center of these um, I've got some network ones there and power ones there um, and yeah and I did this side as well 
and yeah, I'm sort of hoping that that's, that's enough really. I might do a bit around uh, this doorway and kind of up along here just to kind of seal it around the window uh, where I put the polythene tape in, but ultimately I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with everything and obviously this side is you know, it's very difficult to tape up, so um, I will be just that this the polythene will obviously do the job of the uh, of the tape and I, and I check the ceiling as well and the ceiling is all absolutely fine so um yeah patch up a couple of little things but ultimately yeah I'm pleased polythene wrap today and then um, plywood ceiling and walls tomorrow.